Salutations, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. V back with another casted game of Age of Empires 3. I apologize, I have been away far longer than I was planning on. I did take a planned break for the 4th of July holiday, wanted to spend some time with family, do a little traveling, and then I got hit with a head cold as soon as I got back, which you can probably still hear in my voice, this is actually me uh, after it got better. I'm not as uh, I'm not as alluring and creamy with my vocals as usual, but I couldn't stay away any longer, and ever since I casted that game with Rain Cloud and his awesome multiply, I had to find another Malta game, so here we are. Let's get to the player introductions in the southeast of the map. Playing in the color blue as Malta, we have PTW, a fairly high level player. I want to say 17, 18, maybe even 1900, so he's up there. And in the northwest of the map, playing in the color red as the sieve that uh, I thought was dead. <laughs> We have the mighty underscore carp underscore. I'll just call him carp. Uh, but yes, Italy. I did not know uh, top level players played this sieve. In fact, I didn't know anybody played this sieve. I don't think I've ever had Italy on the channel. So if you're expecting high level commentary on this Italy play, you're at the wrong place. I can tell you though, that he has started with a market and house as has Malta. And I think that's pretty standard for Malta. First card coming in, it is going to be three settlers. Uh, pretty standard Malta deck. Yeah, he's got a lot of upgrades for his buildings, which I think, you know, going back to that previous video, watching what Malta did, I'm kind of starting to get a feel for what their gameplay is. It's all about dominating the map and it's about the slow creep. That was what one of the, the comments said, and I totally agree. That's a great word for it. The Malta creep. It is real. And if you don't stop it, uh, you're just going to get overwhelmed. Now, when it comes to Italy, like I said, I don't really know much about this sieve. Their first card is going to be capitalism, which uh, other sieves have. It's just a very nice coin trickle. Um, pretty effective. Not one of the greatest cards, but if you don't have the three villager card on hand, it is it is pretty good. Um, is going to go for this native trading post right away, which I'm not sure what kind of... Uh, okay, so it is Sudanese. There are some pretty good texts in there. And uh, we'll see if he, I don't think he'll be making any units out of there. I think he'll just be going for those economic techs. Meanwhile, Malta going for the trading post, which is something I've been seeing more and more in the Malta games that I've been gleaming through uh, because they, they gather so much wood for their other stuff. Uh, it's really nice for them to get in that trading post, get in that extra XP and get those really powerful cards like German Tongue, like Wignacore out as soon as possible. And picking up 25 wood as well is PTW. Very nice job for him. Him. We have 16 villagers for Malta, 14 for Italy. Italy, Carp is currently about a quarter of the way aged, and Malta just clicking up to the age himself. So, pretty even so far. Nobody is drastically ahead. Nobody has gotten any uh, outstanding treasures compared to the other player. The second shipment for Malta is coming in. He's going to gather that 450 wood, send that German tongue. Such a good card. He gets that commandery wagon, and he gets access to the settler wagons. It is very juicy. Meanwhile, Italy, I kind of want to see what they're doing in the transition. Malta just gathering a lot of wood as usual. This is very, very, very standard Malta. Uh, meanwhile, it looks like Carp is building sort of a forward base where he set up this native trading post. And let's see what he's going to go for. I think he's going to go for the Red Sea trade. Uh, does deliver um, a Red Sea wagon. And those can just build up as time passes. Um, is pretty expensive, though. Um, all of the other ones, yeah, I, I think... No, I think Red Sea Trade is pretty much the sole reason for, for that native post. Um, getting in his placer mines as well as his hunting dogs earlier and research, researching excuse me, his first architect. So I know about architects. I know that they can construct buildings, um, but uh, I, I just don't know how they are used and how viable they are. As his second card, he is sending Ufizi. 
which does ship the Basilica wagon, and it does cause Lombards to trickle XP. So I know that building Lombards is very, very important for Italy. I know it's similar to kind of like an Inca thing where they generate resources as time goes, is getting his steel traps in as well. Meanwhile, Malta, the commandery wagon is out and another commandery going down as well. So Malta might be going for a more defensive play. Wignacor just now coming in, did send German tongues in the transition. So I think it's gonna be a game of map control, right? Italy wants to get out buildings to generate resources. Malta wants to get out buildings to take over control of the map and have access to the natural resources that are already there. But settler wagons and regular settlers are in queue. 21 villagers for Malta already. Meanwhile, Carp at only 19, staying pretty close, but we have to remember that some of those villagers for Malta are settler wagons. So. We'll see where the main point of conflict is. Um, Carp is definitely investing heavily into this uh, kind of upper northern region. He's got his Lombard here. He's got his trading post, another trading post as well, and uh, more Lombards going down. He's also got his Basilica here, so uh, definitely going to make sure that he maintains control of this part of the map. Meanwhile, Malta's kind of taking the southern area. So we see a trading post. We're starting to see more commanderies come down, and he's slowly inching out of his base. The creep has begun, but uh, look at this. Carp is taking this native post as well, which is very far away from his base. We'll see if he's able to defend that. And uh, these guys are the Akhans, so we'll have to see what techs are in there. Meanwhile, Siamese financiers coming in deposits a medium amount of food into your Lombards. Uh, so just a slow investment, which those Lombards I, I have seen in the few Italy games I have watched, because again, I did not know anybody played this if still. Um, I have seen if Italy is able to get a lot of Bombards out, they can get some really, really powerful units out. And uh, we'll just have to see what comes in. Sudanese local forces coming in for carp. What does this do? I don't know what that does. Is that like an upgrade? Is he going to build native units? Surely not. Meanwhile, in the Akan, he's getting the palm oil, which is an economic upgrade. Um, and let's see if he goes for any of the other ones. Let's see. Cocoa beans. Mm, Phantom from. Yeah, I mean, there are some decent native techs in here, but we'll see how much he continues to invest. Meanwhile, Malta... <laughs> Continuing to do Malta things. Let's see what's on the docket for him. British tongue coming in, which I don't see uh, all of the time, but not a bad card. It does send a group of British longbowmen, um, and it enables commanderies to recruit longbows. So we could be seeing a longbow spam here, which is not your your typical Malta play. Usually we see uh, kind of the heavy infantry come out from Malta. We see a lot of those sentinels. It's that's what we saw last game from Raincloud. Um, but something a little bit different here, going for light infantry and putting another commandery up. So we might finally be seeing some conflict here. Pikes in queue for PTW. Going to get out some siege to protect those longbows and maybe take down this trading post a little bit quicker. But Carp has already been able to get a couple of techs out of there. He might not be too disappointed about this loss. And Carp is going up to the third age as well. Already has a livestock pen down, getting a lot of bombards out. Not bombards. <laughs> What is this, Ottoman? He's getting a lot of Lombards out, and look at this, two stables already hitting the floor immediately. So it looks like Carp is going to get away with this age three pretty cleanly. There's not gonna be significant pressure from Malta yet, uh, but Malta is continuing to creep here, has gotten a native post of his own, the Sudanese, so probably gonna be going for those Red Sea trade settlements as well. Uh, but that trading post for Carp gonna go down. And so there is a, you know, you know, not uh, uh, insubstantial, Maltese force, but certainly nothing to make Carp too worried. And we're starting to see a bit of a contestment for this middle trading post here. We see two for Carp and only one for PTW. And uh, let's see, no, no trade carts, no upgrades yet coming in. So we'll see if either player takes full control of the line and then starts to get that upgrade. Meanwhile, Milanese arsenal coming in for Italy. I don't know what any of these decks are. Uh, let's see, delivers an arsenal gun and arsenal technologies are 50% cheaper. Okay, that's not bad. Meanwhile, what is PTW sent? 
He is sending extensive fortifications. So, yep. Looks like a very standard Malta building play. And I think he's finally going to start contesting this trading post. He sees that no units are coming out and even starting to add in some Hussars. So getting the standard three unit composition. But look at this. Carp is going straight up to the Fortress Age, has not made a single military unit yet, even got down a second town center, and is now sending Lucan Financiers, which deposits a huge amount of wood into his Lombards. And what does he have in the Fourth Age? Oh, he's got a lot of Age 4 cards. He's got Florentine Finances. He's got Bersaglieri, which are skirmishers trained. Oh, yes, I've seen these. Really good skirmishers. Okay. He's got two papal bombards. He's got a papal company. Okay, so we are seeing an FI from Italy. Now, I don't know if this is a standard Italy build. Again, you guys are going to have to let me know in the comments um, what, what is going on here, if this is out of pocket or if this is just completely traditional Italy. But it does look like the upgrades from the arsenal are starting to come in. Meanwhile, PDW just now clicking to age three. So for a brief moment, he is going to be two ages behind. Now, yes, he's getting good damage in, right? He's taken out two native trading posts. But at the same time, once age four hits, these longbows and pikes are going to look very, very silly compared to the age four papal units that carp will be able to get out. So I don't know if, if, if playing forward was kind of a tactic to maybe distract PTW, you know, kind of send him on this wild goose chase, take out these buildings and give yourself time in your main base to gather resources and age. If so, that's really smart. But now the papal guard are out for a carp. These are hand infantry. They protect nearby allies. Um, yeah, really, really solid units, and they have a ton of siege attacks. So basically, pikemen on steroids going to be taking out this outpost, and it looks like Carp is finally ready to do some military actions of his own. Uh, one trading post per piece. We have 35 vils for Malta, 40 vils for Carp. So I don't know. Maybe I have underestimated Italy, this is looking pretty clean. Now, granted, PTW uh, basically gave Carp this FI for free, but still looking pretty strong. These guys are both high level, so I would expect nothing less. Now, depositing a ton of coin into his Lombards, and here they are, the Guard Bersaglieri. I have no idea. I'm just going to call them Burs uh, because I cannot pronounce Italian. Uh, but here they are. We have a nice skirmisher a pike mix, and these are both guard units. So it's going to be really hard to deal with these guys with age two longbows and pikemen. Meanwhile, the papal lombards are coming out for carp. So he is wasting no time in getting out the military units. Now, veteran hospitalers are coming out. So more longbowmen coming in, more hussars coming in, and even a culverin. So Malta, I think he knows what's coming. I think he knows that the bombards are on their way. Very powerful, but slow artillery units. And getting a nice bit of damage in on these papal guard. Oh, man. Those papal guard really took a beating, going in unsupported by the skirmishers. But now the cannons are out and immediately going to blow up that depot. Malta trying to lure him into a trap, but out come the hospitalers. Luckily, no units were there to get snared immediately. But we do have a decent mass of longbows here and some order hussars coming out as well. Now we have to remember that uh, I believe Maltese units upgrade automatically their order units. So doesn't have to worry about, uh, you know, investing in those upgrades, but a Decent amount of men out from Malta here, though I'm still worried that he's an age behind, and he's starting to take significant pressure. Uh, these uh, these burrs are a fantastic skirmisher unit, and they're going to be able to kite much better than the Order Longbowmen. Meanwhile, these bombards are going to rip down these commanderies and these camps very, very quickly. Hospitals, technically. But out come the Culverins. A full shot from a Culverin does damage one of those Papal Lombards, but by itself... Uh, the skirmishers are just going to be able to shoot it down. So 
possibly maybe leaving that culverin a bit too exposed, but two more coming out. Meanwhile, Carp continuing to make more skirms, sending more skirms as well. So he's going full into light infantry. He sees that his opponent has longbowmen and melee infantry and culverins, and until he gets something else out, like more hussars, he can continue to spam skirms and not feel too threatened. But wow, these guard skirms are just mincing these Maltese units. If the Hospitallers can get a snare, no, they're going to retreat and take even more damage on the retreat. Meanwhile, more skirms continuing to come out, and both Papal Bombards are still alive. Uh, about half health apiece, but now that the Culverins are here, they might be able to be kept at bay and keep these Maltese buildings safe. Wow. <laughs> You know, this is an interesting matchup. This is not how you would see a typical game go, right? So neither of these sieves have your usual kind of vanilla mechanics, and neither of them have your standard vanilla units. So, oh my goodness. What was, oh my God. <laughs> PTW just resigned. I just saw all those villagers get massacred. I guess he decides that there's, there's no, there's no hope. And I mean, at that point, looking at the results, eh, yeah, 50 Italian villagers, a ton of guard skirmishers, both papal bombards still alive. Yeah, I, that was a really, really clean game from Mr. Carp. Um, wow. Okay. So the Italy turtle. That is, I'm, I'm learning so many new things, all right? Last time I learned about the Malta Creep, and now I'm learning about the Italy Turtle. It just, it reminds me uh, that I cannot get too embroiled in my love for the vanilla sin, uh, sieves. <laughs> Every once in a while, I got to get out and I got to see some of this new stuff, because it is really interesting. Uh, but I'll never stop playing Dutch, you know that. Anyway, guys, let's look at this in more detail. Follow me to the post game. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are in the post game. And when we take a look at resources, we see a slight advantage for Malta. And I don't think resources were the main factor in this game. I think it was mainly the tech. So when we go to the military tab, we see that because Carp was able to get into the industrial age pretty cleanly, he didn't have to sacrifice much besides a couple of trading posts that he had already gotten most of the use out of. Um, once he gets into the fourth age, he's just able to utilize those arsenal upgrades and those superior units. And we can see in the units killed, he had a substantial advantage, even though the size of the militaries was roughly the same. He was able to spam those really powerful age four cards and especially those age four skirmishers. And as good as longbowmen are, order longbows and order hussars and hospitallers against guard units, there's really no contest. But when we go to the timeline, we see that villager count very even until Italy got down that second town center. Then he started to take a pretty big lead, though we have to factor in that some of these are settler wagons for Malta. So actually a lot closer than the graph may show, 50 to 43. So actually probably almost dead even. And then when we look at the military unit count, Malta taking a very early lead, getting some good siege damage done, taking out buildings on Italy's periphery. But as soon as that age four hits, the, the tables totally turn. And that's where it really led to Malta's downfall. But still, a great showing from both players playing two sieves that I know almost nothing about, but I'm continuing to learn. And uh, I thought Italy was just in the trash can, but here it is, uh, high level players playing it and actually playing it very well. Makes me wanna look at some more Italy. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much. I will have another game out for you next week, but until then, have a great day. Have a great life. See you later.